I did need to meet with you. You did? Yeah. For what? Um, the jazz report. There's been a couple things I've been noticing. Um, how can I say this? Your interviews are a little too long. What? Yeah. We got to cut down the time on them. The algorithm is showing that these 20, 30 minute segments that you're doing on one interview, people are tuning out. So I think, you think you can do that for me? What? What are you talking about? It's been great so far. Yeah, yeah but... They're a little too long, so you think you can handle that for me, cutting them down? I don't know about all that. What do you mean? I've heard people do like it. Like? Like who? This wrestler that I know named Maggie. Oh, okay. What, what, what's Maggie Graham have to do with this? I don't know. So what, she watches the Jay Support all the time. What do you say? We're just bring it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you, you got four-time state champion, Maggie, as muscle. To handle this discussion. Yes, she's my JS report guest. She can handle everything. She loves the 20 minute episodes. So, what does she got to do with what we're talking about? You, you think I'm scared of her? Yeah. I think I'm afraid. <laughs> you, oh, seriously? seriously. <laughs> You're not as big as I thought. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Am I supposed to be intimidated? <laughs> oh, what are you going to do about it? What are you, you going to do for John? Wait, wait, wait. It's the Barlet Love, buddy. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord, stop her. Stop her. Somebody stop her. All right, guys. My first take this week is uh, I had Parker Jackson from Barlet High School and White LeCastro from Lausanne High School. They got some huge wins over the last couple weeks. Barlet baseball team got a huge win over North Point, which Parker Jackson ended up pitching. Uh, he held North Point to three hits, and that was a huge win for the Barlett Painter baseball program in that one. And then White LeCastro in the Lausanne Lynx, a D2, maybe a, maybe a powerhouse a little bit in Lausanne baseball right now. They uh, played a lot of decent, uh, great teams throughout the year, and they got a huge win over Broadcrest the other night and beat them three to nothing. And uh, White LeCastro played in that game, in his first game back, I believe, from uh, injury. So uh, congratulations to the Lynx and congratulations to the Panthers on those first take. That's my first take this week. Parker Jackson joins me on the JS Report. Parker Jackson, congratulations on the hard fought win tonight against North Point, holding them to three hits and one run on that game. How's that feel? Oh, great. We really needed that win. That's a good team over there, and I felt good to get the win. What can you tell me about your performance tonight? I felt great on the mound. All three pitches were working in the zone. I was a little nervous at first. Then I started settling in, getting more comfortable. And I was fine after that. What can you tell me about the season so far that y'all have had? I know it's been an up and down season. You know, just talk about your season so far. I mean, yeah, as you said, it's been up and down. But at the same time, you know, this is my, this is my brothers. It's like my family. And no matter what, win, loss, draw, we got each other no matter what. What's the look ahead going to be like for the Panthers, you think? I think bright future for sure. I think right now everything we hit, right at somebody, but I think eventually we'll start finding holes and we'll be all right. All right, Parker Jackson, congratulations on that hard-fought win again, holding them to one run on three hits, and Pedro's won three to one at Elrod Field. Parker, good luck the rest of the way, man. Thank you. It was a big non-conference game for us on the road tonight, and we took the win against Barcrest. Early in the game, we had some timely hits with some runners in scoring position. We were able to get out to a 3 nothing lead. We played some great de team defense behind Luke Hamlin, our pitcher, who threw a complete game shutout. We're a very young baseball team that's beginning to gel and play some good team ball together. Coach Mitchell and the rest of the staff has done a great job this year of bringing all the young, young guys along. Take two this week, I guess some breaking news from basketball. Uh, first of all, I want to give 
Park, uh, Anthony Smith, the new boys basketball coach at uh, Arlington High School. You're not going to talk about Steve Poindexter, are you? Yeah, Steve Poindexter. Are you, uh, trying, to, are you, trying, to, are you trying to move on my territory? Breaking news? Breaking news, My guys. long-time month for Lady Cougar coach for 10 years. And all of a sudden heading out to Arlington. That's what you want to tell everybody about? Yeah, sorry to hear that. So go right here, go right here. I, I got to say Mr. Break News. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Steve Pondexter basically took the job at Arlington High School as a girls basketball coach now. A great 10 years for the Mufford girls basketball team. Multiple right championships. Multiple I'll, championships. I'll in there. He was awesome there. He was the GOAT sent, in Mufford. Sent players to, to D1, like Gabby Crawford. Great job up there. Sub-states, multiple. This past year, district championship with Cooper. You, you take it from me, you take it from me. And then Lance Tucker uh, resigned at Barlow High School football, so uh, Coach Tucker, good luck to him back in Alabama. And uh, the last coaching change that's going to happen is Fade Academy will be looking for a new boys baseball coach. Ronnie Patterson has officially retired from coaching. And that's my take two this week. All right, my take three this week, some interesting scores out there. Um, Milton 5, Crosstown 2, Thomas went to that one, you can go see that video of coverage on the YouTube page under West 10 Media for that one. Chris, Michael's son, had four goals, congratulations to the Michael family in that one. And then uh, interesting scores in softball, uh, Brockers 20, Fade Academy 11, and then Brockers beat St. Benedict in softball 20 to 13 as well, so congratulations to the Saints in that one in softball, and uh, good luck to all the players this week and we'll look forward to take four and hear one minute with Thomas Sowers from West Ham Media. Thomas, take four. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually invited in this time, right? No. Uh, get out right now. Get my other I will intrude again. again. <laughs> I will intrude again. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, we got district tournament action starting this week, Thomas. It all comes down to who's going to bring a silver or a gold plaque back to the 901 possibly for the state championships. We'll start out baseball. Who can be a dangerous horse in baseball in our classification? We know Houston, the Cardinals, any other teams that can make some noise? Um, Arlington, you can watch out for them. With Barlett, can they create some magic? That that lead used to be the, the sub state back in the day. So Class 4A, to get out of West Tennessee, to get out of the Memphis area, it's very tough. So to just reach regionals is an achievement these days. But unite the two top favorites, Houston and Carville, by far. In, in class 4A. Yeah, I think if Barlett can get some runs together, they could make some dangerous noise and that the pitching is there too. They've had a tough schedule early on, up and down season so far for the Panthers. Yeah. But Coach Stewart and the Panthers can maybe get some momentum in that as well. But they play Germantown tonight. And then the winner of that game plays Houston. So I'm sure yeah. we'll see a one versus one matchup maybe early on. Chandler Day for Houston Mustangs possibly. Could Rosemark make, maybe make some noise in baseball? Yes, um, the, the Eli's are definitely, Ramsey and West are two legit studs at, at the plate and on the mound. They have the young arms, everybody's getting healthy at the right time. Um, you, you got a, a, a nice lineup from top to bottom. So, it, yeah, they could piece together a, a nice little run. And, you know, now everybody has to play a series to get out of sub-state. So you can't be a fluke to get in, so you need uh, more than two arms. And Rosemar definitely has some quality. Um, Coach Cole over there and Coach Smith, their co-head coaches, got the guys playing top-notch baseball right now. You know, I want to give Jason Mott and Chris Rogers a little bit of credit, or a lot of credit, okay. just because Jason Mott has been there with the St. Louis baseball pro, or the St. Louis Cardinals organization, so he knows the in and outs regarding pitching, so he can help the Purple Wave in that one. But a team to look out for, in my opinion, maybe could be the Bracker Saints, because they yes. got that Matthew Dallas, Tiny's Tennessee signing, and he also got Aiden McCready, who's a Delta State commit, could basically pitch in the relief work or basically be in the infield and ground some balls and throw it down first and get the pitch. That's out. why in baseball they call them managers because you got to pick the right time to put that starter in, your ace. You have to manage things correctly and hope that they have their best stuff. If they got their best stuff going, you know, hey, it's, you're hard to beat. But sometimes where a kid don't bring their best stuff, it can set you behind the eight ball because most of these terms are double elimination. You have to lose twice. So you want to get in the winner's bracket, stay there as long as you can, have the right matchups, and you're, you know, send the right kids to the mound at the right time. And then for softball, uh, this is the last year for Rosemark before they drop back down. Yeah. Uh, tough district altogether. Top three probably going to be like Briarcrest, St. Benedict, and 
well, not in no order, but I say Benedict yeah. and Rosemark. Could anybody from the West Tennessee side from that division, I know Tipton Rosemark has had a history lately of going to state, but they've always had a battle to GPSs in the Chattanooga Baylor of the world. Yeah. So could this year basically for the Rosemark Rebels, could they basically make a dangerous run in a state championship and basically bring a state championship back? Well, Coach Sanfratello has been sending two or three girls to the circle to pitch. One of them has established himself as the, I call them the cutthroat personnel. They have to be the one that they put fear into the other lineup. And I have to be honest, they're, they're still working towards that. But the bats have been staving them off. You know, Brooke Harrison, the leadoff, she's hitting over 500. She mm. is phenomenal. That's a good table setter. So the offense is there, but can you outscore these teams from Chattanooga who've been doing this like a factory for decades? Can right. you outscore them? So it's going to be tough for Rosemar this year. Briarcrest has improved. So like you said, you just can't hand it to St. Benedict and TRA to be in the championship game. St. Benedict, the, the long championship streak came to an end because of Rosemar. They want to get back on top. So it'll be a dogfight just for those top spots. And then well, let's hope they get out of substate when they have to play those series. And in the higher classifications, you got Kari Real has been doing pretty well. Houston's getting a lot better throughout the year because they got some players that are eligible now. Uh, yeah, and down in 3A, it's going to be murky. I can say the best. Dyer County is impressing me um, against um, my, my local teams of Brighton and Mumford. They're doing pretty well. But one of those two teams can pop up. Millington should take care of their side and be in sub-state. Who will they be hosting in that sub-state game? Same thing for baseball in 3A. Um, could Millington play Mumford to get in sub-state? <laughs> yes, yes. In baseball, it could be another showdown. But... Brighton, um, who I think they snatched up the top seed in the regular season, but had something to say about that. And watch out for the dark horse Rip. Ripley. Ripley, um, Shaq, the first baseman is healthy. That's a legitimate number four bat <laughs> lineup that can go deep. And they got a couple pitchers uh, that can definitely do some damage from the mound. So Ripley might be one of the teams you look up and see them in regionals. Don't be surprised. Then we got track and soccer still going on. But uh, soccer, I believe, still got some regular season games being played in higher classifications. In the private schools, you got Westminster that has done pretty well. You got Lausanne that's done pretty well. And then you got St. George that's done pretty well. They all play together in that same division. So their division starts this week on uh, later on in the week, I believe. And, and now, now I got to give Bartlett some love. I mean, we sitting in, oh. in the home of the Panthers. The Panthers are pretty good. They're so, they played a tough schedule, a national schedule. So you got to watch out for them in soccer. And my Millington Trojans got to give them a little love. Chase Michaels, Chris Michaels' son, had four goals. I think he's had like seven or eight goals in the last uh, three or four games. They just moved Third him over. Week. They moved him over. <laughs> so yeah. so now, now it's paying off benefits. So it's Coach Everson and, and that crew could definitely do some damage in 3A in soccer. And good luck to some of the track participants this week in their uh, regular finales. May 10th is sectionals, I think, up in Jackson for our region. So, so, so good luck to all the other teams in that one. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all next week. I'm glad to make it to the end of the Jazz Report. Lord knows I'm glad to make it to the end. Um, thank you for sparing my life, Maggie. Uh, I literally saw my life flash before my eyes when you grabbed me. Thank you for going. To, and I know what those four girls felt over the past four years that you beat in the championships. Oh my goodness, you're quick, you're fast, and you're strong. So um, I'm sorry to underestimate you. Um, to make it up to you, I'm, go I'm going to ask your buddy, Jonathan, if he can do a special Jazz Report just with you to honor your four years of art. Is that okay? Okay, look forward to that. <laughs>